How San Bushman Got Fire Welcome to another intriguing African folklore short story. Pack your hat, sunscreen and bring some water along as we travel to the desert in Namibia where it is extremely hot and very dry. This is where the San Bushmen live and our quest is to find out how they originally got fire. The San people believe a mantis is the early form of a super San being but they do not regard him as a god like they do the sun and the moon. These primitive desert dwelling folk lived in caves for shelter. There were no cameras in those days so they recorded their favourite memories by painting pictures on large rocks. Here you can see some sort of celebration going on where the people are enjoying themselves and dancing in a circle. Like this tribe, Mantis was a very sociable man back then. Let me introduce you to his much loved family and then we will visit a special character to share the secrets of how the Bushman discovered fire. This is his wife and she's a Dussie. Some people call her a rock hyrax. She has special transformer feet and can pull the center parts inwards to turn them into suckers which help her with her favorite hobby of rock climbing. On top of the highest cliff is where she can be found appreciating an early morning sunrise. This is his son who is also a mantis. He is a masterful hunter and practices his swift martial art moves every day. Concentrating on keeping dead still like a statue for long periods of time with his hands held in a praying position. Then all of a sudden, whap! Flick knife arms flash out and in again faster than the blink of an eye. Then we have Porcupine who was originally named Thorn Pig. Here you can see the dark dingy cave near the ocean where she used to live with the awful bad tempered monstrosity of a father who was highly feared and known throughout the land as the all devourer. As a young girl she was too afraid to live with him anymore so Mantis adopted her and she grew up to be a bright young lady indeed. Porcupine is married to a being that forms part of the rainbow. He has a colourful personality, turning any gloomy day bright in no time at all. His name is Kwamanga. They have two sons with totally different personalities. The eldest boy takes after his father and is also named Kwamanga. The younger brother is a bossy little mongoose and is known as Luchimon. He is full of energy and his favourite game is to try and sneak up on his grandfather without being seen. Here is the last member of the Mantis family. This is the elegant sister, a beautiful blue crane. It is said if she is seen during the golden hour her plumage glows like a magical mirage of oyster shells against the sandy backdrop shore. Now let's go and find the ancient one and listen to what he can tell us. Hello my friends, this story goes back 1 million years to a time before sand people had fire to keep warm and to cook with. Knives and forks had not been invented nor were there any plates. The whole tribe quickly gathered around a carcass as it arrived and all of them feasted together. Just like the lions, they ate on all fours, pushing and shoving and biting away furiously at the flesh while growling and snarling at each other. Sometimes they would go for days without food because they only had a bow and arrow to hunt with and didn't know how to farm or keep livestock yet. Mantis noticed the ostrich would always forage some distance away and he preferred to dine alone. Each time Mantis observed the ostrich eating, a delicious smell would fill the dusty Namib air. Mantis was puzzled and decided to sneak up close to the ostrich and find out what was going on. From behind a bush he watched the stealthy ostrich reach under his wing and place a small piece of fire on the ground. Each time he picked up some food he would pass it through the crackling flames. As the food sizzled and popped Mantis could feel his mouth beginning to water. When the ostrich was finished eating, he picked up the fire and tucked it back underneath his wing, walking off and acting like nothing ever happened. Mantis knew ostrich would not share his fire, so he came up with a genius plan. One day, he went to find the ostrich and said, 
Come quickly, I have found a big tree full of juicy red plums. Follow me and I will show you where it is. Red plums were the ostrich's favourite treat, so he immediately stopped what he was doing and happily let Mantis lead the way. The tree was tall and full with plenty of healthy plums. Ostrich was delighted and began to eat the low hanging fruit which was easy to reach and tasted sweeter than honey. No, you need to stretch higher, much higher, shouted the mantis. The best plums are way up at the top of the tree. Come on ostrich, you can do it, cheered the encouraging mantis. The ostrich was on tippy toes and reached up as far as his long neck would allow him. He almost lost his balance and had to quickly open his wings to stop himself from toppling over. This was the opportunity Mantis had been waiting for, and before the ostrich knew what happened, Mantis jumped up and snatched some fire from beneath his open wing and quickly made off with it. This is how he brought fire to the sand people living in the Nabeb desert at that time. Since then, the ostrich has never flown again and keeps both wings pressed close to his body as he tries to preserve the small piece of fire he has left. As far as bushmen are concerned, ostriches have always come across as being a bit of a strange bird. The hen uses a hollow in the stand as her nest and lays big creamy coloured eggs. Each one the size of a cantaloupe, sweet melon, rock melon or spun speck. Once she has finished arranging the clutch to her larking, she settles down to brood them, but there are always some eggs left on the outside of the nest. Have you ever wondered why? Some say she and her husband are so obsessed by the theft of the fire, they sometimes become completely absent-minded and forget they even have a nest. So now the female puts a few eggs on the outside, as a reminder to herself and her husband to look after their eggs. And that my friends is the end of this African folklore story. To find out the real reason why ostriches have eggs scattered around the outside of their nest, keep on watching. So time passed by and people learned to read and write. Over thousands of years they went from painting on cave walls to chiseling rocks, from posting handwritten letters to publishing typed books. Now we send emails and have an instant wealth of knowledge right at our fingertips. I bet Mantis would have loved to video call his family. Anyway, back to the ostrich eggs. Research has shown the male ostrich digs a hole in the ground big enough to comfortably hold up to 60 ostrich eggs. The dominant female lays her 7 to 10 eggs in the middle of the communal nest which is referred to as a damp nest. Other females in the flock position their newly laid eggs around the centre egg. When the primary female is ready to start incubating the eggs, she discards the smaller ones that are usually produced by younger hens. So that is why ostrich eggs are seen randomly positioned on the outside of the nest. And now for a fun fact. Have you ever wondered why people say ostriches bury their heads in the sand? Is this true? Does it really happen? No, it is just a metaphor that originated in ancient Rome for someone who is ignoring their problems. When observing an ostrich sitting on a nest, they reach downwards with their heads to turn the eggs. This gives the illusion of their heads disappearing beneath the surface.